Can you not understand? It is impossible to defeat me. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at the 10 hardest Persona bosses. Make sure you have plenty of SP before taking on these shadows. For this list, we're looking at the most difficult bosses we've ever encountered across the Persona games. Which of these bosses witnessed your resolve? Share with us in the comments below. Spoiler alert, there will be some mild spoilers ahead for Persona 3, 4, and 5. You have been warned. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Reaper Persona Series This is a boss many players will have missed entirely depending on which game you're playing. In Persona 4, for instance, you won't find the Reaper at all unless you play the game more than once. However, in 3 and 5, you've got to keep your wits about you while exploring Tartarus and Mementos. It essentially exists to stop you grinding in the dungeons for too long, to ensure the game's pacing is kept intact. After all, you're not supposed to reach the final boss of Tartarus and Mementos until the very end of the games, which is why the Reaper is designed to take out your entire party. It is possible to beat it once your party is strong enough, but it's always going to be a hugely difficult fight you're better off avoiding, as the game wants. Or, you know, wait until flu season is up in Persona 5, and then encounter the Reaper. That's how most people do it. Damn it. Carolyn and Justine, Persona 5. Now then, do not disappoint us. In every game, Igor in the Velvet Room will have at least one assistant, ostensibly all related to each other, and that assistant will likely appear as an optional and potentially secret boss. Once you're replaying Persona 5 in New Game Plus, you'll be able to challenge the twins Carolyn and Justine to do battle with you in mementos between May and December. They are just as difficult as they claim to be, and you're going to need a high level party and lots of healing items to take them on. In Persona 5 Royal, you'll be able to take on Lavenza instead once Carolyn and Justine are recombined to create her. <laughs> Contrarian King, Persona 4. It's not going down. It got back up! Hurry and beat it! Yet another optional boss, this one you could easily miss. It's only available in Yukiko's Castle, the first major dungeon of the game, and only after May 1st. Though he looks like a silly mascot you don't need to take too seriously, he's actually a notoriously tricky boss among the fans of the games, especially because he appears so early on. This might convince new players that they're appropriately leveled to fight him, but they most definitely are not, and should leave and come back later. But when you finally defeat him, you unlock a unique weapon for Yukiko once she joins the party and get a permanent courage buff. Worth it in the long run. <laughs> Matarame, Persona 5. Now, let's begin, you vermin. The final boss of the game's second palace, Matarame stands out as one of the more difficult in the whole game. This is because he turns into a giant face made out of paintings. You've got to knock down all the different pieces of his face at once, otherwise they regenerate in a few turns. This also isn't something that new players will know right away, leaving them likely wasting SP in the beginning. The secret to the fight is to have attacks that can target all of the paintings at once, which is easier said than done since they all have different amounts of HP, and since the attacks like that use a lot of points, you know? Jin and Takaya, Persona 3. That is Takaya's wish, so I'm not backing down. Enough talk. Let's do this. 
Takaya is set up as a major antagonist for most of Persona 3, though in typical Persona fashion, he is not the final boss of the game. At one point, you'll need to fight Takaya and his less powerful but no less annoying techie, Jin, on the Moonlight Bridge. Give me a sec. I'll scan the target. They're formidable foes as the rival Persona users to the main party members, and they will drain your vital resources during the dark hour while you make your way towards the level's final boss. To add insult to injury, you don't even really defeat them here, they're able to escape. Two heads are always harder to beat than one. I have failed, haven't I? Masayoshi Shido, Persona 5. There is no need for thieves in my mighty country. Only myself and the ones who revere me are needed. Like Takaya, Shido is set up as the main villain and the primary foil for the main character. His palace is the last true palace in the game, with the final one actually being found at the bottom of Mementos. And until you complete Mementos, he is the final boss. Why won't you stop resisting? The nation I strive for is the ultimate realization of the public's happiness! His palace takes the form of an enormous cruise ship topped with Japan's houses of government, indicating how he controls Japanese politics. Obviously, this can't stand, and after his villainy is hinted at for the entire game, it's cathartic to get to fight him. He is, of course, a difficult foe with high HP and high attack power, not to mention totally arrogant. Few bosses in gaming have proven so satisfying to beat. And let me tell you, I was celebrating when I finally brought him down. That butt munch had it coming. Cognitive Wakaba Ishiki, Persona 5. This is insane! Found at the end of Futaba's Egyptian themed palace, Cognitive Wakaba Ishiki is a demonic representation of Futaba's own mother, appearing as a sphinx. She's one of the game's biggest and most threatening bosses, destroying the entire pyramid you've been battling through. <laughs> She's got a lot of powerful attacks that will inflict knockdown on your party members, thus granting her an extra turn, not to mention a monstrous area of effect dive attack. Much of the fight actually relies on Futaba going through a personal journey in the background until she's finally able to show up and help you win the fight for good with a gigantic crossbow and a UFO. A, a ballista? Shoot it down with this, then beat the crap out of it! Izanami, Persona 4. The want to show and the want to see. I granted a window that catered to both. That is all. The real final boss, you eventually learn that Izanami has been pulling the strings all along. You also find out that another difficult boss, Ameno Sigiri, is actually just a small part of Izanami herself. For longtime fans of Persona, this won't be the first time they've encountered her, as she also shows up in nearly every mainline Megami Tensei game, as well as older Persona titles. But this encounter is particularly memorable, as we find out she's the one who's been giving the people the ability to conjure personas. Eventually, she transforms into Izanami no Okami, one of the most gruesome bosses in the franchise. How can your powers rival mine? Nyx Avatar, Persona 3. Then you also understand that it's pointless to resist. So why do you? There must be fear in your hearts. For the entire game, you're threatened with the coming of Nyx, who plans to destroy Earth after defeating the 12 bosses that symbolize the major arcana. The Nyx avatar is infamously difficult within the Persona community for good reason. You'll come across this infamously difficult boss once you finally reach the top of Tartarus. Even if you know exactly what you're doing and have your party managed efficiently, the hardest part of this fight might simply be just how long it takes. All shall perish. The time has come. Though if anyone is familiar with JRPGs and how notoriously long their boss fights can be, that's probably not a problem for you. Nyx symbolizes death and fear and has a lot of phases to get through. 
Worse, its arcana will constantly change during the fight, meaning you've got to have varied personas at the ready to take out. You can't stick with one, you need a diverse arsenal. Number 1 The Big Bang Burger Challenge Persona 5 It takes an entire game of grinding out those social stats to finally overcome this beefy beast of a food challenge and become Tokyo's foremost eating contest champion. We're just kidding, of course. The only conspicuous absence from our list is actually our number one here. Sort of. Even though we don't have numbers. Yaldabaoth, Persona 5, aka God. If you continue to reject that border, there will no longer be a place for you in this world. Also known as Demurge, this is Persona 5's true final boss, the entity fueling the existence of Mementos. Again, basically, God. You need to journey all the way to the bottom of the dungeon, here represented as the Tokyo subway system, to finally reach this guy. Like Izanami, Yaldabaoth has also been seen across the franchise. He's the one who wants humanity to submit to its darkest desires. In this way, it's not just Yaldabaoth that you're fighting, but the corrupted desires of the entire population of Japan. Are you kidding? This is just some kind of rigged game you started! The foolish mass has merely spread into their thoughts and forced the progress of society backward. He's got multiple forms and phases, initially looking like the Holy Grail and then transforming into some angelic robot monsters, Transformers, or something like that. This is another fight that's going to take even the best player a long time to beat, so make sure you come to it with plenty of patience. I, for one, did not. I got so flustered, honestly, that I booted the difficulty down to the easiest setting. I know, I know. Roast me in the comments if you want. I'm not proud of it. I... I was too impatient, alright? But that's how hard it was. And I'll admit, I probably wasn't the best prepared. So, just fair warning. So this is the true trickster. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.